The Retro Buzz starts right after this. Hey guys, it's Friday, so it's time for another edition of the Retro Buzz. And today we've got a real special guest. But before we get, what are you doing? Are you not paying oh. attention? Oh. We are, we're live. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. we're live. I mean, we we do the show every week, and every week you're doing something other than doing the show, Glenn. Come on. A week a week's <laughs> gone by already. Wow. Yes, 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 it has. Oh, and nice. but but you know what? Finally. I'm not alone with you. The last two shows I've been alone with you, and it's just been an utter disaster because you just get so off into another world. We've got back with us Mr. Douglas Smith, fresh from Florida. Absolutely. Or as China. Uh, China. As Glenn, Ch oh, yeah, Glenn yeah. insinuated. Saboteur. Uh, saboteur trying to stop the release of the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I'll let you know how successful that was later on in the, in, uh, the show. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a great trip, and I'm glad to be back on the show. Well, it's trust me, it's great to have you back. You know, Patton tried to uh, cover for you last week. Uh, Travis tried. He tried to keep Glenn under control. Well, you saw how that Harder happened. So yeah. I wasn't I wasn't carrying the eye candy like Doug can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we brought somebody else, Glenn, to hopefully try to harness you. We've got Joe Sabo from SaboSArcades dot com. Welcome, sir. Joe What's up, guys? Sabo! What is up? So we are you doing good. We got a full house here today. So we're here to talk to you about some of the cool stuff that you've been bringing to the arcade platform, arcade industry. So why don't you tell a little bit about yourself to people that may, may or may not know you? All right. Well, my original background started in the sign business. Um, I started my own sign company when I was 17, 18 years old. And I'm now 30 plus years into it, and I have always been a passionate video gamer. So obviously it makes sense to slowly tackle into the arcade world. I'd say we're looking at eight years now, maybe, that I started to really focus on doing the, the arcades themselves. You know, it started out with just simple restoring of my own and then starting to offer it to people. Originally, we used to do it just through Facebook where people would like order something and then I'd have to talk to them. And then it took a while till, I don't know, a year or so till I actually opened up an actual video, you know, website. And then that changed a lot because it was a lot easier for me, not so much um, having to like look through messaging. And it was a lot easier process to a flowing of the orders. And then we just kept trying to build a library larger and larger. And what I try to do um, is create custom stuff that other people don't have. Now, I obviously do the normal artwork for, and I'm really known for the full restoration and the larger arcades, not so much the one-ups. I mean, we do them and I really enjoy it, but I'm really known in the industry for more of the, the higher end clientele of the arcades themselves, the full size. So I like to do the creative design work, honestly, more than anything. Um, not just recreating, you know, like the normal artwork that is out there. I like to take it a next level, you know. Very cool. I see you had like some full size arcades, and Glenn somehow he he somehow stumbled on you a while ago, right, Glenn? Yep. Oh yeah, it did. And I have I have some artwork here that I was hoping to have on by uh, today's show. Slacker. Uh, it'll be a Tron cabinet behind me, but this thing we don't want to talk about today kind of screwed up this whole week. Virus. <clears throat> no, you're just so slacking. I, it was too busy at work. <laughs> yeah, Slacker. that too. But it was just so busy at work, I didn't get a chance to, and I, I apologize for that. But you will definitely see how it turns out on a, on an episode. But yeah, Joe Joe does a lot of things as, as well as you know restorations, and it's not just these new machines. You know, like the arcade one after games or 
custom ones. If you have like a, an original machine, you know, he can help get that artwork restored back to its original beauty, which is obviously what you want when you're restoring these machines. And, and Joe um, puts in a lot of extra effort to make sure that the artwork is meticulously done correctly, put on there. He's, he's a little bit of the opposite of me. He likes things done perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that's good. I mean, we've it's got a lot of hours. <laughs> it takes a lot of hours to restore a piece of artwork back to its original. You know, if you, you go back into the eighties and everything was kind of vector lines and, and then there was some half tones, you know, in there, but then you get into the nineties and it was more of a, like the digital end where things were printed with the more pattern. So it's like, if you looked at a screen, a TV real close up, you would see the actual pattern. Now the issue with that is, let's say that you scan a piece of side art and there's a scratch through it. It's not that simple to just fill that area and you gotta kind of match that pattern. And that's where it can get really time consuming to try to, to fix those patterns. And if you scan a piece of artwork um, with a small normal size scanner, you could have 50 scans on one side and then you have to go ahead and put them all back together and mend that back in a lot of times you'll get color shifting per scan. So to blend them all together, to hem them together and then fix any imperfections, because no matter what the side art, even if it's a brand new piece of NOS, which is new old stock artwork, if you take that and scan it, you're still gonna have scratches, imperfections, dust, things like that, that you don't really notice when you look at it, but when you scan it, it shows everything. So you have to go in and fix that. And then just because you scan something, it doesn't mean that your printer and the product that you're printing on and the type of printer you have, that you're gonna get the output at what you see. Like I could have a piece of artwork here, but then when I actually output it, it doesn't mean I'm gonna get exactly the same thing on this side. So that's a whole nother battle I'm trying to get those colors. So unless I have a real original piece to work with, I can't be comfortable with saying it's matching size, Colors, everything. Well, what, what about trademark, Joe? We have a uh, Gunther in the chat room. He asked, like, how do you how do you deal with trademarks on some of these? I mean, some of these cabinets are 20, 30 years old. I mean, is there a process that you go through with that? Or is it kind of like fair use? I mean, what, what's the process that you go through with that? The issue is um, some of the times you can get lucky and you can work with people. And other times it's it's pretty difficult or sometimes impossible to even get a hold of some of these original people that created the art. So mm -hmm. it is kind of up in the air. Um, there's not many people that have true fully licensed, you know, effects on any of it. There's a couple things that we do, like we just worked with Rampage artwork and I had the original artist, um, he was working with me and he drew that up. So that is fully licensed and working that way. But there's a lot of stuff that some of the companies don't exist anymore. So you really wouldn't even be able to get the licensing fees, you know? Yeah. So that's that, the Rampage artwork looks really nice too, man. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but that work looks really good. Yeah. Today, actually, somebody just shared um, where they took the uh, actual, they took a video or a picture of it in their arcade, the full size, the first one that we've seen on the cabinet. It looked really good. It's pretty cool. Nice. I call that the cool toy look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so Doug, I don't know if you can I know you've been over there in YouTube land. I know there's some questions there. Are you able to facilitate some of those? I know I sent you a message about it, but I didn't know if you saw it. Um Yeah, um there's a question from Sean Powers in the chat. He says, Joe, will you have speaker panel graphics also available on your Tron kit? Said they couldn't find it on the site. Well, it actually I probably should have made that um as a separate item, but if you buy the sides in front it's going to come with it. Oh, that's very okay. So yeah, it's, it's part of the kit. I need to probably update that if it's showing as a confusing piece, but if you buy the sides and the front, it's the speaker grill is part of it. So let's throw this out and there. It needs it. I, I think it needs it. That speaker area needs yeah, something and you know, it does need it. It's, it's kind of plain. Like you can see on yours, Glenn, if you move your head a little bit, you can kind of see it's just it's <gasps> very, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And when I created it, I created it for the Legends cab specifically so that you do not have to take a knife to this thing and trim anything. Nice. Which, which to me was a big thing with, 
you know, a lot of guys that are getting into the arcades with the legends and the one-ups, a lot of guys are younger or they're just getting into it. So they don't really have a lot of the um, experience with like, you know, doing all the refinishing and refurbishing. A lot of guys that we ship artwork to for the full size, they're doing full restorations. So they've, they've done a lot of this type of work. So they don't need, you know, they don't really care as much because they're, they're used to it. They've been doing it for a long time. But now we're getting like a different type of market of people where they would, you know, make it as easy as we can for them. So with the Legends exclusively, this is the first time that I, I tried doing it. It was a lot more work because everything has to be accurately, you know, perfectly accurate. Again, I bought that cabinet just so that I would have access to it and that's why i actually had to buy a walmart version which i'll and have that's what he, and that's what he's telling the wife that he's sticking to it that's why <laughs> yeah. he bought it just yeah, to do the it. artwork i have to have it for the business it's a business yeah. deal the business you know? expense. if i play it don't pay attention to that i'm just trying to burn some time right while i'm yeah. ma- making measurements in between that's all like, yeah that's quality assurance yeah exactly yeah. So, but honestly, if you don't have the machine, how can you feel confident that it's going to fit or it's going to be accurate? It would be basically impossible. Oh, of course. And I know you want to get into the differences between the Walmart cabinet and what you had to go through with that. Um, but I know there's some questions floating around here about, so there's a lot of guys out there doing, and I'm, I'm not asking you to slam on competition or talk on competition, but a lot of people want to know. And I definitely never do that. No, and I know you wouldn't do that. And most most businesses wouldn't do that. But people want to ask, like, what separates what you do from other people because of pricing? I noticed that your pricing is a little bit different than, than some of the other guys out there. But I also heard mm-hmm. you use a different type of vinyl than what some of those other guys may. You want to elaborate on that so people kind of have an understanding? I'll, of what I'll you're elaborate, doing. but I don't want to give away my. No, don't give away any like, trade secrets, secrets but as far just... exactly what I'm yeah, using. Exactly. Because that would kind of kill my own thing. But what I try to provide is number one, hopefully people can say that it's true, but my customer service. I mean, I really go over and beyond. If it's not me, my wife, we're constantly, constantly monitoring our messaging and we're trying to keep up to date. And we still can't get everyone all the time because it's virtually impossible. I don't know if people realize just how many messages and comments and questions that we get on a daily basis. Basically, if my eyes are open, I'm working seven days a week. So I love doing it, but if there's just a lot, and a lot of times people don't realize that it's not just their project that we're working on. We have hundreds of people in their same situation that we're trying to get to. And we don't pick things off of a shelf like Walmart or, or uh, you know, Amazon where we're just throwing it out. So a lot of times when I put my dates on how long it's gonna take, that is truly realistic times because we're printing each thing to order. Now we don't like have a huge inventory of marquees and things. So a lot of times with all these custom stuff, they're one-off time things, you know? So it takes a lot of time and we have to do it in the order that they came in. So let's just say we have a sale or there was that, that special day on um, when we did it with, you know, legends, right? Yeah. When we were doing that. So we could have a ton, a ton of orders that come in. So now we have to take those and then we have to start bringing them in. Now that's just one, one um, sale. That doesn't include all the other work that's already been in there. I'm at a point at this very moment that we're not even, you know, I'm turning down per day custom jobs. People are like, I really want you to design. I'm like, I can't even do it for like three months minimum. And I hate to turn the work down, but I'm not going to just say, yeah, I can do it. And then you're going to sit in a queue for six months because that's basically what it's going to be. I'm doing all the designing and fabricating and production by myself. So I have a couple of people helping me, but they're basically just packing the product. But I'm the one creating it and making it and printing it. I got multiple machines running at once. And, I'm, and, I'm, and that's how I feel that I keep my quality at the highest level because my hand is on 100% of every piece of job that goes throughout. From the billing to the creating to the post on the website to the designing. Now, the only thing, like I said, I don't do is literally put it in a box. That's it. Well, real cool. quick here, we did get a super chat from none other than Retro Ralph. I'm going to read that real quick. Joe killed it with the Legends Ultimate artwork kit. 
Joe bought sexy <laughs> back to at games or something like that. So basically he brought the Glenn to the at games. Religion. Congratulations. Joe. <laughs> Oh boy! But so another thing I, think, that... I do want to say real quick when about this, I've you know, obviously you know I've done a lot of mods myself, and I've used a lot of different kind of vinyls, and I will say there is something different with Joe's. I never really had a problem with anyone's. I did have to cut uh, the uh, the uh, the artwork obviously to put it on, but the, his vinyl is different. Whereas I, I didn't get any bubbling in it, and he actually said that you won't find any bubbles. Now I did other ones. The bubbles you work out, you can get them out. Sometimes you use a like a pin to get out. But when I put on Joe's, and I did that on the one I gave away to my neighbor, uh, Mary Parker, the uh, Mario Brothers unit. And Joe, thanks again for doing that. He, he kind of did that for me as a favor. It was like a last-minute thing. He helped me out. And even the, the, the bezel putting it on there, it went on, and there was no bubble. So I don't know what he's doing in there. Um, but it did go on very well. Uh, so this is something different with the vinyl or whatever he's using on there. Maybe it's, maybe it's babies. Maybe it's little babies <laughs> in the, in the vinyl. <laughs> But it goes on very, very well, and and uh, you know the quality was definitely there. That's great to hear because that is what my Saturday project is for me tomorrow morning and afternoon. Is I've got my kit in this week from Joe for my Legends Ultimate Cabinet, and I'll be putting on my graphics and custom artwork that he did for me. And I can't wait to get that all put together and uh, just show you how how it installs and how well it and easily it goes on according to Glenn and according to Joe. And I, I fully firmly believe that too. I, I, it sounds like he's got this dialed in with the no cutting and everything. And I'm I very do, anxious. Yeah, I, I do have some videos showing, you know, the application um, when this Walmart version comes in and I was going to do it on this time around, but I just, again, with not having the time, I'm going to take the time this time on the next legends cab. And I'm going to go through the complete install process, every piece, and just, you know, so for my clients and, and just for people in the community alone, even if you didn't buy my artwork, I mean, every technique isn't going to be the same because I I'd spent a lot of time considering what the end user, like how easy to make it for the people. So that's one of the things when you're asking me, why are my prices different? I don't really try to be competitive in pricing and I'm not like some people may feel that I'm trying to overcharge, but for what I'm doing and the quality that I feel that I'm producing and the materials that I'm using and the techniques, it's it's not at all in my eyes, considering what I've done. And it's not something that I've just started. I mean, I've been in business over 30 plus years. If you look at, if I just sold the Legends cab in just vinyl, just straight vinyl, sure, I could do it cheaper. That's not a problem. I used to have guys that would come to me in my sign business, you know, somebody wants a custom logo and a truck letter. They're like, I want this, 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 and that. I'm like, okay, it cost X amount of dollars. And then let's say the guy doesn't do it. And then six months later, you see the truck go down with nothing like what we talked about, simple, straight black letters. And then of course it was cheaper because we weren't comparing the same thing. So this, this falls into the same thing with the artwork. If I use different materials, if I don't do reverse mounted process and I don't worry about color matching and I don't worry about how it's packed up. I mean, you guys can see if you, anyone that's on here, that's got my artwork. When you open up the packaging, I try to be first class with even the packaging. It starts right there. It's from there and throughout the entire process. You know what I mean? And I, I take so much pride. And that's why, if you notice my company name is my name. It's my name on everything that I do. So I put 150% into every product that goes out the door. So let's let's talk a little bit about the Walmart cabinet, right? That was something you wanted to touch on earlier. The differences for the the vinyl, right? Because it's a difference in in the cabinet. And like you said, most yeah, people so the probably cabinet aware looks, of it. The cabinet to look at it, you would think is the same cabinet. Like, yeah, it looks the same, but honestly, the holes the sizes are not at all. So I could not just take that same artwork from Sam's and, and send it to people that have Walmart. It's not going to work, not even close. Especially if you look at the Tron artwork, we're following the shape, contouring the shape literally to the edge. Ralph knows it because he has the Street Fighter. It followed it. And both of you guys, Glenn and, and um, Cool Toy, will see how it follows the contour. So if it doesn't follow that exact shape, then it's not going to work, especially the marquee. The marquee has 
aligned holes. You hear stories where people are like, I got a, a marquee and it, the holes don't line up. That's because the person, whoever they may have got it from, didn't have a cabinet there. So what are they basing their specs off of? Now, I had um, Ad Games actually sent me the files, the literal files, the PDF and the DXF files of their cabinet when we started to do this. But even still, if anyone knows and works with laser machines and plotters, you still, for myself, my own sake, to be confident in the fit, I want to have it there. I usually do a cardboard template of the shape, cut it out, literally cut it out, and stick it on there and make sure. And if you notice half of the photos in some of my website, the products are on an actual product. It's not always just superimposed. So I'm confident when that marquee goes out, it's going to fit because it's already been on that cabinet. It's not like I don't get thousands of, you know, my return or my amount of people that request to like or complain is extremely low, really low. Honey, I got to buy that cabinet. I got to test the artwork out. <laughs> it's business. Yeah. So this is, I don't know how many one ups I bought just because of that reason. You know, when, when Mortal Kombat came out, I went and bought one of them so that when I took my photos and when I did that, it looks the part because it's literally on there. You know what I mean? Now, with the full size cabinets, it wasn't quite as easy to do because obviously there's thousands of games. I can't sit there and have thousands. I mean, I have a lot of arcades. You can see this is just a few in my collection. I have a ton at my shop. But if somebody would bring me a full size machine, then we have their original shape at minimum. I need the shape. I need the dimensions. If the original artwork is on there, I'm scanning it. I'm color matching. If you go back when I used to do a lot more videos, you'll see the process of what it takes. And a lot of people don't realize just how many process steps there are to create artwork at a high level. So that's what I try to do. The quality as now, high as, as you can do it. Now, how does people feel about that? Because now, you know, when that game first came out, you know, they had the Legends, which this is a, a Sam's one behind me. I think, Doug, you have a, a Sam's Club one. Yep. And that's now an endangered species because they're not making that yeah. one anymore. Now it's always going to be the Walmart version. So yep. in reality, any more mods we get to do on this, we might be in trouble because they ain't going to fit. So, well, I don't know. Like, I think you've even told me that like the control panel, the holes, the screws were slightly like thinner yes. or thicker. I don't know yet because I didn't get the new one. But I'll be really curious when I get it to, like I said, if you were to look at it and you look at the photos and you look at a post of one of them, they look identical, but believe me, when you start pulling a tape measure and you're cutting panels that have to line up, it is not the same game. Well, it's completely I agree. Different. Maybe me and Brad have the same problem. We look alike, but we're just not. Well, I was going to say, Glenn, <laughs> maybe me, you, and Doug, we could sell our original uh, Samsung or uh, Sam's Club cabinets to get the new one uh, because now it's a collector's uh, item. Wait, uh, collector's sell? Item. it's a collector's <laughs> item. Did you think sell? What? Glenn doesn't sell things. Yeah. No, no, because he. What's wrong with you? Requires <laughs> <Sell it. laughs> Especially how, if it's gonna be rare, how, sell it. How many? How many do you have, Glenn? Do you have five of them? Not yet. I've only got Doug one. and I only have one, so I mean, yeah. you have to have like two or three at least. I thought one was Not sufficient. Yet. Glenn's got you know, are... Star Wars and three Trons and. <laughs> doesn't every? I don't understand. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Joe's like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I'll have two, you know. See, there we go. So he's got one up on you because he'll have two. You only have one. You better yeah, get busy. You got to get a Walmart. Do you, you got to send $5 to, uh, to Arcade One Up for that? The, the one up? You got to. Oh, uh, bum Just asking. Now, I got to say, though, Joe, I'm really enjoying the Asteroids Deluxe behind you. That was my game back in the day. Uh, I love that machine. That cabinet looks great. It is. And man, the 3D effect with the mirror, you know how they did that. And if only on the yep. back, only in the back corner there is a Space Invaders Deluxe original. And when they had that reverse mirroring with that vector monitor, you're never going to recreate that in emulation. Just not going to happen. You, you're just you're, not. You're, you don't live too far from me, you know. You don't, you're already uh, not too far from yeah. me. So. Right here on my... Um, on my right is a little blast city. So I don't have it on because it was blurring out the screen, but that's a cool cabinet too. Really cool. 
we got a question in YouTube for Joe from MM. It says, Joe, did you buy Burger Time from Arcade 1-Up? I did, Maybe. and it shows that I'll have it Wednesday. All right. He's wondering now, if he'll be offering ago. fitting artwork for that since it's got a, a unique panel shape. Well, the sides, I feel that there's no need because they, they've they done it. Um, yeah. And again, I'm never trying to... Uh, I think I could do a cool topper for it. Um, I, again, I want to do something that someone you else need. hasn't done. I yeah. never try, like, let's say I see somebody that did something cool. Oh, that's neat. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, I'm going to do that too. I try to do different things because that's one thing about this industry. There's enough work if you do good work for everyone, right? They don't Absolutely. need to sit there and bash people. And it's very bizarre to me because in the sign business that I've been doing for over 30 years, I used to lean on other competitors and we would help each other out because why would you sit there and bash each other and, and be enemies with people when you can help each other out? It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't Perfect know. agree more. Preaching to the choir. That's, that's kind of what we were all thinking when we came together and, you know, built the retro buzz. It's like, let's put our heads together and, you know, create this yeah. community and open up this, voice for the community it, you know it's it's all about helping each other and building each other up not competing and fighting with each other that's just right. petty nonsense the cool thing about this business versus the sign business is normally with the sign business i was dealing with just professional people you know mm -hmm. and they don't have i mean they have a passion for their job but the passion level with with collectors and people that want to do and what really helps me is because I am in a huge, I'm as much of a fan of games, video games. I mean, just today, you see what this is. This is. Ah, there we go. Yep. Good choice. From Limited Run. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I'm just huge, huge video game guy. So this stuff to me is just crazy. I, I mean, I get to live my dream of working in something that I love to do. So with the knowledge that I've grown to, you know, have one guy, I told you in pre-show that there was a guy that I found the comment uh, and I don't remember his name, but I found it. And it said about putting the artwork on the control panel with yours, yes. with yours. I know there's some competitors out there or others out there that make them that you have to take all the buttons off. He wanted to know with right. your setup, do you have to do that or all okay. right, so here's here's what I did, and that's another reason why I took a little longer to come out with uh, an art package. Um, I was talking to Bill from At Games for the longest time, right from the beginning. That I'm like, listen, I want to, I want you to send me if you would offer to send me the files, and he sent them to me. And then at first, you know, I was like, oh, I want to get something out there, but I'm like, I'm not comfortable with. So the panels, have, if you all know, if you have one, mm -hmm. is an acrylic overlay right with reverse printed product on the top so to me i really hated to see sticking vinyl over top of that and to do vinyl you absolutely will need to disassemble the entire control panel to make that happen could i offer vinyl at a cheaper price as a control panel option absolutely i can do it tomorrow i can send it set it up no problem but the problem with that is it, it just doesn't make sense to put something that's lesser over a quality material. So what I wanted to do is after I disassembled my control panel, took it off the, off the legends cab and I looked at it and I looked underneath and I thought of the type of people that are going to be doing this. Right. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot going on there. Um, that's a lot of stuff to disassemble and, Yes, a lot of people will not have a problem, but there's going to be some people that are like, oh, that's a lot. I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to tackle that. And it's going to deter some people from ever doing anything with the cabinet because they're going to look at it and say, ah, it looks good. It's good enough. I don't think I want to tackle that because there's not going to be. Now, again, we could have done a video on showing it, but still, it's going to take some serious time to disassemble an entire control panel on the legends cab there's a lot going on there so i said what can i do to make it so that you don't have to go through all that you do still have to do a little bit you want to obviously take it off but if you just bought my control panel let's just say that's all you wanted to do is put a tron control panel on your cabinet and that's it you still got to remove it off of the machine 
So you unplug everything, you take it off. You only have to take the two joysticks out and the top of the spinner balls, uh, the spinner move, you know, the controls themselves. It's one Allen key. You pop them off and then you're just left with the controls, the stumps themselves. And then you have the two joysticks. They do have to come off because when you're laying that over, the ball is bigger than the diameter of the base. So that has to come off. But that's only one little C-clip underneath and pop it off. And again, when I do this, and I know that Glenn's going to be doing one and Cool Toy, he's going, Doug's going to be doing one, that they'll probably show it as well. But it's very minimal that you have to do now to be able to take that off. So I made that you know, purposely as an option so that it makes it easier for people. As far as the sides, because it's not real T-molding on these cabinets, it's just a chrome taped um, product. It looks good, but you can't remove that and put it back because it's a one-shot deal. If you go removing that chrome T-molding, well, it's not real T-molding, it's just taped on, then it's done. So you'd have to strip it completely, all the old glue off, and then try to do, that's a lot of work. And for what, why would you wanna do that? So if I made the graphics oversized on the side panels, then it's gonna be an issue for the person to trim nice and clean right to the edge without scratching the chrome T-molding. I could see people cutting into it and, and all kind of crazy stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, that's not gonna work. What can we do? So I wanted to die cut it perfectly. Now I made it a hair undersized because you don't want it to go over and be hanging off somewhere in um, onto the chrome T-molding itself. So it's just slightly undersized. I mean, so minuscule, but it's a perfect contour, all the panel. So you got your lower control panel that's in the front. That includes that piece. We have the speaker grills. Now I did cut the speaker holes out, but, and when I did it, because I have enough experience, I was able to keep the grills on there and put it on, but it's a little bit tricky. So I would probably recommend to remove the speaker grills themselves, just that, so that you're dealing with a flat surface. You have to think about those things are protruding out. So it's just going to be more challenging for someone. So if you simply just take those off and put it in place, you'll see the outer shape. You just have, you know, put it in place and then you put them back, you're done. Now I may go and I'm going to ask Doug and, and uh, Glenn's opinion after they put the kit on themselves too is, should I have those speaker grills cut out or should I just leave them solid and let the person trim it? But now I'm claiming that you don't need a knife, but then you would, you would need to trim that out. But if you do it and it's centered correctly, it'll be perfect. You just can put those back on. But one of the things you do have to consider is one of the biggest simple steps is you just want to clean all the surfaces that you're doing with right. alcohol, you know, yep. dust free. Yep. You don't want to be, you don't want to do this stuff outside, obviously, definitely not in the sun if you had to. Um, lay the machine down. It's going to be a lot easier. You're not dealing with gravity with the thing trying to fall and things falling over. Let gravity work in your advantage. Lay it on its side. Use the clamps. I've, that's another thing that I feel that I do. I've had people that have bought the artwork and they're asking me questions and I'm right there and I'm answering. I'm helping them you know, as much as I can. There's not, you're not going to get that everywhere. I don't, I don't think so. There's places that you could call and then you're lucky if you, you hear back from them, God knows when, but I'm like right there as best as I can. I'm not going to say that every person a hundred percent gets everything. I mean, I still have a life too, but I try my best to. You're not be allowed there. to have a life, Joe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a, we had a crop dust, uh, dusting alert just real quick here. Oh, we said uh, no the, virus the king, of, the, the king of crop dusting, P-dubs. I uh, want to say uh, toilet paper fund for the fellas, just in case they are running low. Uh, <laughs> stay clean, guys. Have a great show. Well, I will tell you, you know, I, there's a lot of men in this house. There's never enough toilet paper. So <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, so, Joe, somebody did and, ask. And, 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 so, and where, where, quick thing, too, is well, what he said about before is keeping the stuff clean. He's right. Alcohol, if you have a microfiber cloth or even a good paper towel, just go over it. And now take any dust or stuff off of the surface. Uh, just helps yeah. when laying it down and make sure it adheres. So that was a very good tip. Just now one thing I wanted to ask people too, like you can ask in this chat right now, let's see how would people feel if I offered, I mean, obviously you have to pay for it, but if I gave a complete install kit option, like all the tools you needed, 
Now, granted, you can go get the stuff, but to me, some people might look at it as a convenience that you just click a button and everything you would need to install it, you can buy in one kit. Almost like they do. I don't know. Is that like, something that somebody people so, would like? Almost like Window Tint so, does, right? You know, where they give you the yeah. squeegee and mm -hmm. the, the bottle solvent yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you got like the the low end, which is probably just you know the small cheap cutters and a knife and the cutters, and then you Joe comes in and installs it for you. Value. <laughs> yeah, we can That's do in house cool. installation. So Joe, yep. a Joe so, in a box. A Joe in a box. Somebody said in the chat room they wanted to know if you were going to get into possibly doing T molding replacement for the uh, at games if they don't want the chrome, or is that something that's on your plate to do or thought about or? Well, the problem is back to it's not actually t-molding so it's just double-sided kind of adhered to the surface so now if you go oh, pulling that off um could we offer it there. absolutely yeah there's nothing there so it's not okay. like t-molding that you can remove something and put it back into the groove even that if anyone that has done any type of restoration knows once you start ripping t-molding out of a cabinet especially when it's mdf it starts to rip the the That's slot cool. wider right mm -hmm. and i pity the fool who takes out my t-molding i pity that fool <laughs> <laughs> so even doing the t-molding removal you don't want to be ripping it out on an angle and like yanking on it you know what i mean so you want to slowly go methodically around and baby that edge so that you're not ripping it wide open now right. cabinets the, the, that the have t-molding does cabinet, have the team molding has little grippies in there. And that's what you're talking yeah. about. So if you so start ripping like it, those grippies ball. are going to like pull the MDF ball. right out. Yep. And a lot of panels, let's say there's water damage on a lot of older cabinets on the bottom, let's say six inches. All along the bottom, you're going to see the gap has widened to the point where the team molding doesn't do anything. It's just flip-flopping in there. So there's a couple techniques. Um, one of the techniques we've had, and you got to do it in small increments at a time, is we'll actually use hot glue and squirt it into the slot itself and then baby it and go around that way. Now, another thing some guys were struggling with on the Legends cab, there are some people that had the molding start to release on them in certain areas. So I was talking to Doug about this and I showed him um, what I recommend. So it's kind of like a jealous gelatin type of um, super glue. So it's a little thicker than normal super glue. It's not gonna be running all over the place. You know what I mean? So you just put a small area down in the area that you need, put it in place, and then put tape around, you know, so it's over the face of the T molding and then around the sides and just leave it there overnight and then slowly take it off. Because if you use hot glue in that situation, it's not going to work because there's no groove for the glue to go into. So now you're going to have lumps all over the place because you know that the hot glue is very thick. So it's instantly cooling down, and you'd have lumps all over that thing. It would not look good at all. What What about this, Joe? Would this work? The uh, Gorilla Glue? Um, no, no. It's, it's like a. So the problem is gonna add water to that. That, that expands, it, it expands ten times yeah, expands. the amount that you lay. So that would be an utter disaster. Well, I'm, you'd I'm, have I'm, I'm putting it out there because people, this is what they're gonna go grab. They're gonna go grab now, the Gorilla Glue. So Gorilla Glue does now. Gorilla Glue is just a brand. They sell lots of different products. So. I tried to, I don't want to show Gorilla Glue as the brand because they will buy exactly what you're saying. There. Right. But if you, if you go to Amazon and you just search for, ah, I got to look. Glenny you know. Glue. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Because the there was. Glue. Well, that's, that's why I'm asking that because I mean, I, I obviously don't use the Gorilla Glue on the arcades, but I do use it for like when my, with my cosplay stuff. Uh, my Darth Vader boots sometimes has a tendency the sole comes off. This stuff will hold that sole on there, and it will not come off. But yeah. I, it's good to know uh, you mentioned about the hot glue, the hot glue, you know, making it lumpy. These are things that, you know, obviously, if they're yeah. asking this question, we don't want, you know, use your expertise to tell the folks. So if you, you know? go to Amazon, it's called Gorilla Glue Gel, right? So it looks like super glue, but it's going to have the markings and the labeling of Gorilla because it's a Gorilla brand, but it's a little bit heavier. So when you put it in place, it's going to stay. It's not going to be because, you know, super glue is like water. This so that's stuff here? Micro precision super glue gel. Yeah, that'll work right there. And it, it's great in your hair. Keeps your hair from moving. Yeah, it's a good, good idea. Six bucks, guys. Now, 
if you use too much of that, you'll you'll end up with no hair like I have. <laughs> <laughs> but now the super glue or the gorilla glue that you held held up there, that's great in certain applications, but it, it its purpose is to expand ten times the amount. So if you put one drop and it does need moisture to to activate it, right? It, so yes. natural wood has usually a percentage of moisture in it already. So if we're gluing a sign together and we're gluing two pieces of wood together, the, the natural moisture in the wood itself would start to kick. It's kind of like concrete and water. Like you could put a bag of concrete in the dirt in a hole and not ever add water and it will harden eventually because of the moisture in the in the ground itself. So the Gorilla Glue is the same thing. But if you use Gorilla Glue on a non-wood product, then we actually used to mist it with water to activate it. Hmm. That's good to know. P Dub yep. wants to know: Are you collecting super chats because he said uh, if it makes the orders move up the list? Looking for a bribe. <laughs> He's looking for a bribe. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if I got my orders out faster, the only way for me to do that is the quality is going to go down, and I don't think people want that to happen. That's 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 just reasonable. It's yeah. your reputation on the line, like you said. It's your name. It's your brand. You're yep. going the extra mile. You're doing things that other companies aren't doing. You've got a passion for it, so you've got a keen eye for the details. And it makes sense that you would want, you know, the better product going out there to your customers <clears throat> with your name on it, and that you're going to spend that extra time to make sure those orders are correct. Yeah, I mean, it's just unfortunate because we're living in a world now where everything is instant. instant right like you, you buy from amazon i'm guilty of it too i mean i buy a product and i expect it tomorrow what do you mean two days what the heck that's crazy like, <laughs> yeah. get that order button and start looking out the window what do you mean what do you Not mean virus days, i went it the same day <laughs> there's been a couple of times it's the same day i ordered something yeah. and i guess it was a close thing and i got it that night i'm like what yeah. did you see the drone drop it off I, I did. I did. Not, I've seen it come it down a dog. couple. I haven't seen blue in a while. I've seen it come yeah. down a couple, a couple times, and drops it off and goes on its way. And you know, it's crazy. That's crazy. I've thought about like trying to get someone else to, like another. Uh, I wouldn't say a competitor, but like another company out there to like start to help me to to speed it up. But then I feel like I've lost touch of why I'm doing this. I don't want to just be a store that I'm producing mass because honestly, if money was all I worried about, I wouldn't even be doing what I do because I'm never going to get rich doing this. I do it. I get rich in the feeling of that. It gives me of producing and creating these things. And if my mind isn't clear, then I can't get creative. So I need to keep that so that I stay creative. Now, do you do, do you still do like sign work and everything, or is it just do. strictly? So that's arcade? another thing. No, I still like this week alone. I I could have maybe done four or five trucks. So another thing, it's it's hard for people to understand is that truly still is the bread and butter of the of the business. Mm -hmm. So I got a company. Let's say a company just buys a brand new truck, and they can't put it on the road, or they can't start to do business until their truck is lettered, right? And they usually are bringing the truck to me from the day it's either painted, if they repainted an older truck or it's a brand new truck, they're not gonna, they're not even legally allowed to be on the road with commercial tags without yeah. license, with lettering, they can't. Right. So there's times where even my clients there, they're like, oh, well, you know, can I get my truck done? I'm like, well, dude, between the sign work and the arcade work, and it's just, I try to balance it out as best I can. All I could do is, Ask for people to be patient, and you will be happy when you get the product. That's it's all do, I can say. Yeah. Do you do things also like car wraps? I know that's a big. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Vehicle wraps. Um, I started out when I first started in the sign business. Everything was done by hand, so I was hand lettering trucks. I was pinstriping motorcycles. I did custom Harleys for many, many years. I was airbrushing T-shirts. I mean, you name it. We've done huge museum work where we were doing carvings, hand carving, sculpting, it's just everything across the board. So it was really nice to bring all those skills that I've learned through the years and bring them into the arcade industry. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. 
I I always we have a guy that's real local that um he does some vinyl work for me for my for my truck and that and that's what he always says too because I asked him before you know locally I asked him I said do you do any of the arcade refurbish because we used to have a tilt uh that before they just went out of business and he goes I, I don't have time man he said with all the signs and stuff that's why I was curious if you you know if you still did sign work and I would and say trucks, right that's now tough. on on purpose my business has shifted more arcades um and that's the beauty about having your own business that i can shift it to whatever i want if i want to just do hats tomorrow i can turn it into hat i mean it doesn't make a difference i could do picnic tables next week so it, it's cool that i just steer my business in the direction that i want it to um but i have a family and i have a lot of overhead that's another thing i have a huge shop that has a, a big overhead that i gotta keep running so you got to be able to pay the bills or um, nobody's going to get anything. Yep. Come on, we need some super chat. Got to pay the bills. <laughs> get those super chats coming. Yeah, so with, with that being said, with, with T-shirts and stuff, I know a lot of you guys have asked about the Retro Buzz shirts, and I was working with Glenn and Doug the other day about getting a design together. So I reordered, <laughs> I reordered after the design because Glenn had to have his just a certain way. Doug's probably the easiest to work and with with it. on the right – on the right, on top, be on the right, on top. Larger. larger. See, yeah. see, when I ask for help, Doug's usually good. With he'll say, ah, I think you should better on the bottom or on top. Not Glenn. Glenn's just like, as long as mine is big, it's in the middle or in the left. Yeah. That's all that matters. But um, <laughs> hopefully next week, um, depending on how shipping is with everything going on, I'll have one that I can show everybody. And if if your game with it, I'm in the process of setting up the shop where you guys can order direct. It's not going to go through us or anything. We're trying to keep it. I talked to the guys. We're trying to keep it to where we're selling it at cost, meaning we're not going to make anything on it. We we want to do it for you guys, the community. I also got approval, you know, um, I shared with them. I have an outdoor brand that makes these, they're almost like Yeti mugs, right? The Yeti tumblers with my outdoor brand um, and the camo. We're getting, no, we're getting um, retro buzz ones made as well that you guys will be able to order from the store there. I worked out a partnership with the company because I do a lot of my outdoor stuff with it. They make coolers that are branded with my outdoor brand. So look for that, guys, coming. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about that. I just got two messages <laughs> saying, hey, what about the shirts? We have, you haven't said. So I, I want to put that out there. We're going to have that kind of stuff, coffee mugs. I know Angel right. did a really cool coffee mug for us that Glenn is, is going to show here. Um, but I, obviously he did them as, like, one-offs. I know – oh, yeah, there we go. Everybody's – we all got them here. So – um, cool. kudos to angel for that we we appreciate it but we wanted to make something that everybody could you know support the show in the sense of just advertising stuff for the show and we appreciate it so we're going to try to keep everything at, at cost level so you guys aren't paying a fortune for all this stuff yep. right and, and you know what uh the pictures are much better i don't look like i was beating the face yes <laughs> that was the other thing we had to work no. <laughs> Yeah, we we fixed that all like up with the eight. We went sixteen bit instead of eight because Glenn don't look good in eight bit. No, it's surprising. <laughs> it's surprising. <laughs> but yes. No, it was it was fun. But I, you know, listen, I I I get it. I know it was you halfway. Guys. I was like turbo graphics. I was eight bit CPU, but sixteen bit graphics. So I was just for the beach. It, it's still Doug snuffed it out, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we we got that all ironed out. So we're gonna see how it looks. Uh, we'll have updates for you, but. But, uh, you know, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Joe Sabo from Sabo Arcades. We encourage you guys to go check it out. We, you know, part of the show is not just bringing on uh, people to talk about arcades, but we want to we highlight a lot of the businesses that work with the arcades so you guys know what your options are when it comes to whether you're getting graphics made or maybe you're doing a brand like we are and you need Joe to make you a sign if he's got time. Uh, get a sign for your arcade room or something. Oh, you know, maybe you need a really cool I've backdrop. I've got some cool things for people's rooms. You know, I even have one in my game room. Can't see it right now, but it's it's definitely a cool thing that we'd like to do as well. Like the fat head graphics, I've oh, done yeah. them too for people. Do you do you any know? of the like the the stand ups? Oh, that's... we need a fat head of us. We gotta have that of us. You already have a fat head. Yeah, I, was I about know. To say. How big of a wall? <laughs> How big of a wall do you need to be able to fit Glenn? Oh Gino my goodness! <laughs> if if I did that, if I had like, wall of China. <clears throat> if I had us as fat head, if I had you guys on the wall of fat heads, my wife would come down here and go, "Is there something wrong with you?" Like, <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. 
Do you ever do any you know, of those? Speaking the, of the, fathead. The, I was going to say, do you do those big cardboard cutouts too? I can. Oh, there you go. But what's, nice. what, what's cool is I was thinking of actually offering us an art set that um, is like the fat head that can be removed. Oh, nice. Um, but the problem is there's there's some issues with material. I've, I've already researched it. So one product isn't very opaque. So let's say you have an old Asteroids cabinet. This This vinyl is kind of transparent in a sense like, you need a solid base. So if you were to stick um, this graphic on a white and a black square where it's black, it's going to look different than where it's white. So that's mm -hmm. not going to work well on running over old artwork. You'd almost have to have a white base and then put it on. So now it's kind of defeating. I mean, you have to like wrap the, the surface in one solid color and then you can keep removing it. You know what I mean? But the that's issue with that is about that with these with the arcade machines so do you have the stencils for a lot of those classic machines like a pac-man uh yeah. zaxxon so you would have those things and you can have them cut to those specifications oh you're talking about the actual cabinet shape or... yeah right exactly or you still a have lot, to cut of, a lot of the stuff I, I do have yeah i don't say i have everything but i have a lot of things yes and some so, and, and you don't have to answer this but somebody in the chat room wants to know what design program that you use for doing your graphics. I have a lot. I have a couple of different things. So in the sign business itself, we use a program called Flexi, and Flexi will operate some of my printers and some of my plotters. When I say plotters, if things are die cut, right? Um, then I use Photoshop a lot, a lot of Photoshop. I've never really used Illustrator, and a lot of people will be amazed at why I don't. It's just because I've had these other softwares. Um, that I've always come accustomed to because they operate a lot of my hardware. So it made more sense for me to run a, a software that can then operate the hardware that it's designing to print from. So I have, you have to have a RIP software, which is only taking the information that you've created either in Photoshop or in another program, and it converts it into a file that the printer itself can understand it breaks it down the resolution the materials you don't really design in that software but you know there's different products for that different printers have their own rip software some you can buy um, second different kind of companies so but as far as the main designing if i'm doing any kind of like graphic repair that's not vectorized it's going to be in photoshop we have some different filters and add-ons that we use. Well, when I keep saying we, it's me. I, I'm doing it all. <laughs> there is no, no we. There. Yeah. There's no well, there's we. Me, and myself, me. and I. I mean, yeah, three. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's really where a lot of the creating and designing comes in. But it's vector, or if it's stuff like that, then it would be in my Flexi sign software. I used to use Corel Draw too, but I've kind of faded that out. Because see the difference, um, Corel and stuff. You can buy these types of programs over the counter, but if you get these so sign softwares and things that are running the equipment, they're like four or five grand mm -hmm. for the software. And that's another thing that people just don't understand: the amount of investment it takes to have the equipment and the cost and the materials. When you buy vinyl, you don't buy a, a little roll. It's like a fifty-yard roll. It could be four or five hundred dollars per roll. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can get a lot of material out of that, but you have to pop out five hundred dollars just for the vinyl, then the laminate, then the inks. The inks are you know, could be one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars per ink. And I have eight, twelve inks in in a machine. It's crazy. People, yeah. people, people need to people, understand that because there's yeah. a vinyl and then there's the laminate topping. So yes, just two stages you got to put on there. You have to put them together properly so you don't get any artifacts. You got to have a laminator. Or, yeah. I have two laminators. I have one that's a heat assist and I have another one. I that's have a laminator. Cool. I, I work <laughs> in video. So trust me when I, I know what you're saying with <laughs> software, hardware, it's expensive. The, the, yeah. the machine, a lot of people probably, do it right. The machine yeah. that we're using to switch the show. Microsoft is, Paint. Yeah. And he's just working with an Epson ink <laughs> printer and just pumping this stuff through and then upcharging everybody. You could you, you could sit there like just like with video, you could sit there with OBS that's free and do it, mm -hmm. or you could sit there with what I'm using, a forty thousand dollar machine to make it look like TV yeah. and be able to go on TV. I mean, there's a little and, and have a professional call in system. So 
you know, but people that's have, the thing. Like, I've always, I've wanted people that want the quality and yes, care. If yes. all you care about, and I'll be the first to say it, if all you're worrying about is the price, that's your number one concern. I'm not your guy. Yep. I'm just not. Yep. And I don't care to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that. And I can live with myself and sleep at night knowing that because it is a fact of life. But if you want the highest, I'm not saying I'm the best in the world at what I do. I feel that I'm pretty comparable with competitors, but I know that I give the best possible option and quality that I can provide. And I sleep at night at a reasonable price for what I give you. And that's the bottom line. Wow. How do you follow that up? Good you thing know, all, I say well, only one thing. Good thing we're at the end of the show. Wife, <laughs> I was reaching out to Joe. It was his wife who responded. So she's working too. She's putting a lot of help into the the, uh, the company as well. Yeah, she has a full time job, a very good job. But if she's off even for a half a day, the first thing she does is come to my shop and she helps me. She does invoices. She'll get back to people. Now, normally, if somebody gets a message, and a lot of you guys that are watching will know that, she'll post on here, Joe's wife or, or Krista, you know, she'll say it on there so that people know. She, and I did that be because... the boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, Everybody's the, 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 the CEO thing. of the company speaking. You can't even have help with that because, you know, if somebody asks you a question directly and then you let someone else answer for you, they're going to answer for you how they want to answer, not how you want to answer. So I'm even, I can't even let that go. Like I have to be the one answering questions. So I do have a control problem with, that's why I could never probably like grow to be this huge factory of doing it. But I don't think I even want to go there. I like to be smaller knit and, and keep the quality level high and just do what I do. And hopefully people can be patient and, and you know, reap the rewards once they get the product because like i said i don't have a lot of people complaining about the product it, they might complain about the cost or how long it takes but that's part of the deal it's all together you know what i mean it's just what it is well you know what joe we really appreciate you coming on here we're going to wrap up the actual show and recording and go into post show um tell everybody where they can find you and wh where they can get access to your awesome graphics well, I have the website, sabosarcades.com. You can also follow me on Instagram. I do have a YouTube channel that's not very active lately, and I wish it could be, but I just haven't had the time. You all know that are in the video deal how much it takes yes. to do video editing. That's a whole nother conversation in itself. To just do live videos obviously doesn't take as much, but if you start to going into special effects and trying to create cool content and adding things, you could spend four hours on a 20 minute video easy and I just don't have the time to do it. Yeah. Well, they I would say four hours. That's pretty good actually. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and but what... yeah, check out my website, Instagram, Twitter. I'm all over the place. Yeah. So is this guy here. He's all over the place all yeah, the time. He's stealing, he's stealing my thunder with that one. Yeah. I was just going to say, <laughs> just, just give him the cliff notes today, Glenn. Listen, uh, you know, Joe's a good guy, but if you want to find me, Glenn's Retro Show on YouTube, and just Facebook, the At Games page, the Arcade one -up page, the Tiny Arcade page, the Basic Fun page. You're on the, the clock. Page, You're page, on the clock. Page. Jeez. <laughs> Press the mute button on that guy. No, I'm just kidding. And <laughs> also, Doug, check him out, YouTube.com slash Cool Toy. And I, did I just hear a saber go off? That's right. The Cool Toy. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, look at that. Here, I'll pull your lower nice. third down. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can get it in the shot. The thing's, uh, it was awkward to get don't it on the plane. You're going to burn your hand off. That's straight from Florida? Yeah, straight from Florida. Coronavirus free. China, <laughs> I Florida. Think, I think anyway. China, <laughs> China Florida. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I heard. I but was, I'm glad to be is, back. Is that, is that your ultimate saber? Is that what you went there? That's what you you wanted? That's how exactly you wanted it to be? Good Absolutely. experience? Yeah. Great experience, worth the price, um, high quality. Uh, I definitely feel like I got my bang for my buck and everything. So I was really happy I took place in that experience. Well, it's great to I have Chewbacca you back. behind you. Someone's got Chewbacca behind. Yeah, Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, somebody rang the doorbell. That's probably UPS. <laughs> oh, maybe it's maybe it's uh, the rest of your Star Wars goodies from down there. No. <laughs> so, 
But guys, make sure you check in every Friday. Who do we got next week, Glenn? Who's on the show? Who's on the card? I knew going to ask you that. I, hold on a second. I got to check knew. the old calendar here. We do want to get these. We do want to get these live at some point. Yes. But uh, you know, there's a thing called time. No one seems to have it. We don't have it. But that. let's see. Next week is going to be. Oh, you don't remember who's going to be next week? I oh wait, wait, wait. Is it the twentieth? Oh, nope. ah. yep. Yeah, man. We've got David McIntosh Whoa. next week. Um, apparently, they're going to have a major announcement that they're going to they're going to talk on here. So you don't want to miss next week. Um, we are still in the process of trying to get ETA Prime on. Um, he's hit or miss. Uh, gl- both Glenn and I were talking to him this week, and it was it was kind of hit or miss. This whole virus thing's he's got very mysterious. Up. He's very mysterious. Very, yeah. very. Whoa. But he does look. He looks a lot like. <laughs> Uh, RGT85. So Glenn and I have this theory that maybe they one are the one in the same. You never see yeah, them in the same, same room. Nope. Nope. <laughs> never see them in the same room, same time. It, it could be. And we've had RGT85 on here, so he's probably like, why do you want me back on? I've already been. So. <laughs> we'll let you conspiracy, conspiracy theorists figure it out, but Stick around for post show. For those of you that are live, we'll let you guys call in. I've already put the links in the chat room. Feel free to call us in if you got questions for Joe. But again, we really appreciate it. Stay tuned. Subscribe to the podcast. We're everywhere now. You could subscribe to audio or video, depending on what you want. Um, also on our respective channels, you can watch it. Whoever you're, you know, whoever you're subscribed to, go watch it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies. Share it with everybody. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week for more of the Retro Buzz.